Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's free CompTIA a certification training course on troubleshooting printer problems. This module discusses the requirements from our 22702 section 1.5, where given a scenario, we need to detect and resolve common printer issues. And we're going to go through a number of symptoms like paper jams, blank paper, error codes, out of memory, and a lot of other problems you may run into when printing. We'll also talk about how to resolve those problems, replacing fusers and drums and clearing the paper jams and power cycling and some other techniques that can get you out of problems that you might be having whenever you try to print something out and you're running into problems. Let's start with the troubleshooting process. Before we can resolve the problem, we need to determine where the problem is really occurring. And in printing, that can be a little bit of a challenge. Printing is a relatively complex process. It involves not only an application and a printer driver, it usually also involves a connection across a network, either a wired or even a wireless network. And it involves another piece of equipment on the other end that then also has to function properly. So the first thing that we need to do is gather some information. Let's first identify what really is the problem that we're having. Are we getting a blurry printout? Is there a line on the printer? Is it a garbled print? Are we getting anything? It may be no printout at all. Sometimes that occurs. We need to think about how we can also gather information from all of these different components. The printer itself may be showing a message, or maybe it's not showing a message, which is also another clue as to what might be going on. Your computer may be popping up some messages on the screen talking about the way that it's communicating to the printer. There might be information stored in the event log. The user themselves may have information about what they have printed. Here's an idea. You can always go to the printer itself and see what other print other people have printed out. There's usually a stack of printouts right there that have come out during the day on these big network printers. And you may be able to tell if the person's having a problem with blurring or streaking or lines on the page. You may want to look and see what other people are finding. Do other people also have these exact same lines on the page? If so, we may focus our efforts then on that printer rather than something that might be occurring on the user's workstation. There are some other techniques that we can use to gather information. We can always print a test page to the printer right from our Windows operating system. Inside of Windows, if you go into the properties of a printer, there's a lot of different options available for your printers. But down here at the bottom is an option to print a test page. And if you do that, the operating system will use the printer driver and send a printout to the printer. And then you can make a determination on whether that worked or not. That way you can determine if the problem is perhaps with an application or maybe something related to the operating system. And you can also look at the quality of the printout that's there. There may be other ways to also use diagnostic tools. There are some on live CDs that can send printouts to printers as a test. The vendor themselves may also have some test utilities to use. And the printers themselves sometimes will have a self-test built into them that will print out a page of information. If you print out the Windows test page, it looks like this. It says Windows printer test page. And it tells you about how this particular driver is configured. And this should look very similar to what you get on the printer once you run the printer test page from that Windows option on the properties. Inside of many printers is an automatic print function where you can check the quality of what's in there. So you don't have to have the printer connected to anybody's computer. It doesn't have to be connected to the network. It can be just a standalone printer that you've plugged into power, and you can have it print out a test page. This is a great sanity check because maybe you're not quite certain if the problem really is with the printer or if it could be some external piece that's in the network or on somebody's workstation. So run this print quality check, and you'll be able to see very quickly, am I getting good quality here? Can I really see what's going on? And that way you can make a determination. If somebody's complaining a blurry output or there's lines on the page, you can run a test just with the printer and see if the printer prints out the same thing. Is the printer having a problem with lines? If it is, then maybe we can focus on the printer. If it's not, we should look somewhere else for where this problem might be occurring. If you are running this and you've now gathered information about how it looks, maybe now we'd also like to now decide what possible causes there could be. If we're able to print properly from inside of our operating system with the printer test button, but the application isn't printing properly, maybe we should focus our efforts on the application. If we look at the printer and everybody is having the exact same problem, 
Maybe it's something related to the printer. We can now start adjusting and trying to figure out what's going on. We may want to grab the service documentation also for this printer. Is this something that happens a lot? When's the last time this printer was serviced? Have we run into this exact problem before with this particular printer? It may be something systemic that happens over and over and over again. That's some very valuable information, and you should always go back and look through some of those things. If you have a knowledge base available to you, especially on the manufacturer's website, you can find out if other people are having the exact same problem you have and find out if there is a fix that's been released that might resolve this kind of problem. You should also make a determination. Is this a software problem or a hardware problem? Is it related to the driver? Could there be a problem with the connectivity between the workstation and the printer? Or is the problem maybe on the printer itself? By collecting all of this information now, you should at least be able to start leaning one direction direction or another so that you can focus your efforts now on resolving the issue. So now let's think of some solutions. Let's come up with some possible causes for this and start applying the fixes that we've come up with. If you go back to our troubleshooting video in our 701 series, we have that the entire flowchart that we go down to try to determine where the problems are. And we should at least try our first idea of how to resolve this. If that's not resolved, we go back to trying the next best thing that's in our list. While you're there, you might also want to consider at least replacing the consumables. You're working with a laser printer or an inkjet printer. Check the printouts. Make sure you have enough toner. Make sure you have enough ink. And if any of it's low, you can go ahead and, and refill those, put a new one in there. I'll make sure there's plenty of paper in there. It's like bringing a car back with the tank already full. You're taking care of these particular assets and showing the end users you care that you they are getting the output that they need to be able to do the job that they need to do. Also, make sure the user finally does get a good printout. Just because you think the problem may be related to a toner cartridge and you replace the toner cartridge, don't walk away yet. Have the user do one final printout just to make sure you can get their check mark, get their sign off that this is now something that is resolved, and now you can go off to the next issue. There are a number of printing problems that you'll run into all the time. One very common one is a printer saying that it's out of paper, even though it appears that there is paper in the paper tray. On some of the larger printers, there are multiple paper trays. So you want to make sure when you're printing to the printer that you've selected the correct paper tray and you're not trying to actually print from a paper tray that may not have paper inside of it. You may also, of course, want to check the paper trays on the printer themselves and make sure there is paper available to us. You also want to make sure you have the right kind of paper and that the printer is able to use that paper in the right way so that it does not jam as it goes through. If it's an older printer or the printer's dirty inside, you may have a problem with the printer pulling the paper through the correct way, and it may jam. You also want to be sure you don't use paper that either is too light of a weight or too heavy of a weight. You want to be sure that the weight of the paper is properly designed for this printer. So check your printer information. The documentation will certainly tell you the weight of paper that is supported by that printer. If you're having problems with ghosting or lines or smearing, there may be a few things you can look at. If it's an inkjet printer, check the print heads. Very often, there is a way to clean the print heads. You may want to run it through a few cleaning cycles of that and see if that doesn't resolve some of the problem. If it's a laser printer, there is a photosensitive drum inside of the printer. You may want to check and make sure that there's no scratches on the drum. If it's coming out blurry or it's smearing once it comes out, maybe your fusing process is not working properly. Is it not heating up properly? Is the paper cold when it comes out? You want to be sure it fuses all of that toner particles directly to the paper so that it does not smear once it comes out of there. On your computer and on the printer, you may also see error codes. And sometimes these error codes are simply numbers, or it's a phrase that doesn't make much sense. There's usually not a lot of room on some of these printers to put a lot of detailed information. So you may have to go back to your documentation just to see what it says this particular error code means. On laser printers, especially when you're printing very, very large graphical documents, you may have instances where you run out of memory inside of the laser printer. If you recall back to our previous 701 video on laser printing, you recall that the entire page has to be built in memory before it can even start the printing process. That means that if it is a text page, it probably doesn't use a lot of memory. But if it's a very complex diagram, especially heavy graphics, you're using up more and more and more memory to do that. And if there's not enough memory inside of the printer to build that page before it starts printing, you'll get a 
out of memory error, it probably will print out only a portion of that page that it's been able to put in memory up to that point. So make sure you check your printer that it's not giving you an out of memory error. Also, you may run into problems where the printer's just not working. Maybe you have a problem with connectivity. Perhaps the print queue on a particular machine is corrupted. You may have to clear the queue and restart the spooler service. Occasionally, you'll run into a particular set of jobs or a particular person's machine where the print spooler is always failing for one reason or another. You may have to manually go into the services and restart the print spooler just so you can get things going again. On network-based printers, we have to also be concerned about the IP address that might be assigned to this device. We want to be sure that it does get an IP address from the network or that the IP address on the device is one that is working properly for the network that it's connected to. Sometimes it requires a recycling of the printer to get it to work again. These are self-contained computer systems. Occasionally, they will have bugs and they will have problems with their software. And the only way to resolve it is to reset the printer. The easiest way to do that is to power it completely off and power it back on again. If you start getting a lot of garbage coming out of the printer, a number of things could be wrong. One is that you may be using the wrong printer driver. You want to be sure that the printer driver matches exactly the model of the printer that we're printing to. If you continue to have problems, there could be an, an issue with the way the data is getting from the computer to the printer. A bad cable, for instance, could cause big problems when you start looking at the output and you see a lot of corrupted information. Let's see what we can recall with troubleshooting our printer problems. Our first question is, what operating system feature can test printer quality? Well, we've already known that we can pop up the properties of a printer inside of Windows. And down at the bottom is a Windows Printer Test Page button. If we click that, we'll be able to get output on the printer and see just how well the operating system and the printer are really talking. If you end up having a black line down the entire page of a laser printer printout, what does that mean? What, what does that really indicate? Well, probably the case that you have a scratched photosensitive drum. And that drum is just going around and around and around. And that entire scratch can be followed all the way down the page that it's printing on. So if you run into that kind of problem, what do you do? How do you resolve a scratch on a photosensitive drum? Well, unfortunately, you have to replace the drum. And in most cases, that also means replacing the entire toner cartridge. So you want to be sure that if you're having problems with the drum itself, it's going to affect everybody's printout. And really, the only way to resolve that is to replace the drum, or in this case, the entire toner cartridge with that drum. That covers our requirements from our 22702 Section 1.5, where we needed to resolve some common printer issues. And we've gone through jams and error codes and out of memory issues and much more. And we've learned how to resolve some of these things by replacing fusers and drums, clearing paper jams, and much more. If you'd like to see any of our absolutely free a videos, you'd like to participate in our message boards, or send me an email, you can visit our website at freeaplus.com.